Thank you for joining us here for this pre-concert talk for the Dartmouth, wind, Dartmouth College Wind Ensemble. Um, and also a special welcome to everybody here for the Music Mexico Symposium. Um, it's been an incredible couple of days and we're looking forward to this conversation as well. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm Joshua Price Cole. I'm the managing director and executive producer here. And uh, it's with a lot of pride that we have these incredible artists with us tonight. So we're gonna hear a discussion from, with three of the composers who have works that are being premiered tonight, Rodrigo Martinez, Nubia Jaime Don Juan, and Juan Pablo Contreras. And we are uh, lucky to have Sisto Montesinos Jr. here as our uh, moderator for the conversation. And I'll introduce Sisto and then I'll hand it over to you. So Dr. Sisto Montesinos Jr. is an assistant professor of music and head of instrumental studies at St. Mary's College of California in the San Francisco Bay Area. He is an active Mexican-American conductor, music ambassador, and scholar. His work aims to overcome stereotypes, as well as to strengthen Mexican, LGBTQ, and Latinx representation in the field of music education, repertoire, and performance. He is the artistic director of the St. Mary's College Jazz Band, as well as its Chamber Musicians program. So I turn it over to you, Sisto. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Well, thank you so much for being here. We're really looking forward to this talk today. Um, this is just an incredible group of artists and composers. And since our time is limited, we only have about 20, 25 minutes. Um, we're just gonna go right to it. But before we do that, I do have some short introductions from our composers that I wanna read for you so that um, you get to know a little bit about their uh, background. So um, we're gonna, we have, first we have, um, um, Rod, um, I'm sorry, Juan Pablo Contreras over here, who is born in Guadalajara, Mexico, and currently lives in Los Angeles, where he teaches orchestration and music theory at the University of Southern California Thornton School of Music. He is the youngest Mexican composer to earn a Latin Grammy nomination, and is celebrated as the first Mexican composer to sign a record deal with Universal Music, serve a sound uh, serve as sound investment composer with Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra and win the VMI William Schumann Prize. His works combine Western classical music and Mexican folk music in a single soundscape and have been performed by 40 major orchestras in the United States, Mexico, Spain, Argentina, Colombia, Slovakia, and Venezuela. His mission is to write Mexican-inspired classical music that people will actually listen to. He wrote that, so... Um, <laughs> Um, and then we have Nubia Jaime, and Nubia is from Hermosillo, uh, Sonora, and the first woman to ever win first place in the prestigious Arturo Marquez competition. Um, it's a big deal. And she began studying cello at age of six and is currently the co-principal cellist for the Sonora Philharmonic Orchestra. And um, her composition teachers include Arturo Marquez, Alexis Aranda, uh, David H. Breton, and she is uh, the co-founder of the music publishing company Navaja Musica, a production and musical creation. This company focuses on music for audiovisual media, concert band, and orchestra, and high quality musical arrangements. She is part of the collective Las Montaneras, that brings together composers, performers, and researchers seeking to elevate the work of women composers in music, and in particular, Mexico. Nubia Jaime's mission is to portray the traditions and roots of her Mexican identity in her music. She seeks to capture the essence of Mexico in each of her works, this Nubia. And last but not least, we have Rodrigo Martinez, and um, Rodrigo is originally from Mexico City, where he studied composition at Academia de Arte de Florencia and Nucleo Integral de Composición. He's currently studying a master's degree in electroacoustic music at Centro Superior Catarina Gorska in Madrid, Spain. And apart from studying, Rodrigo is working on several professional music projects as a producer, arranger, and composer. He is a member of the band's Monstros del Mañana, 
Super Silver Hase, and most recently La Chicana, an experimental cumbia band based in London. He is also has a studio of private lesson students as well. Rodrigo is the winner of the 2017 Arturo Marquez Composition Award, the 2017 Dartmouth Wind Ensemble Compos Composition Competition, and the recipient of the prestigious McDowell Fellowship, joining the ranks of many famous parts, past recipients like Aaron Copeland, Leonard Bernstein, Virgil Thompson, and Meredith Monk. His music seeks to close gaps between the academic and the popular. He believes music can be so a social experiment in which we all come together as equals in a fun and artistic environment. This is Rodrigo. So um, the first question that we're, um, I have for them is um, very simple. What inspired you what, to become a composer? How did you get started um, writing music? So um, we can, why don't we go ahead and start with Nubia? Yes. Is it on? See? Okay. Well, uh, I started studying uh, the cello when I was six years old, but I had problems with instructions, always. I wanted to do little, little variations, always. My teacher said, you will be a composer. But I couldn't believe it, but because I still I still didn't know uh, the name of any, any female composer. Um, of course, uh, later I found out about Fanny Mendelssohn, Lili Boulanger, Guadalupe Olmedo. Um, when I was fi uh, 15, I heard uh, the first time Danson number two, number two by Arturo Marquez. And the following year, I had a per the opportunity to study the composition and Latin American music course with him. And my perception of music totally changed. And then I decided to be a composer. I love listening to my music. I get, it, I, I get very excited when musicians Mm, play w mm, what I write, you know, and, and I see it uh, and I hear it and I, I feel that I, I am capable of expressing my own perceptions of the world. And my music always shows who I am, um, that I feel, my roots, my culture, my identity. My works are always inspired by something very specific like a, any composer. You know, um, very specific, such as place, um, some element, you know, water or fire, um, uh, animals, plants, people, but it's, it, it also deals with sensations uh, that I have experienced. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, so next we have Juan Pablo. Hello, everyone. I also started at six. I started playing the violin. Um, but I'm from Guadalajara, Jalisco, and there were no violins my size, so we had to order it from Mexico City. So the first three months of violin lessons were basically taking a pen, imagining it, it was a, a bow, and just like air bowing for three months. That was it. But I guess I, I really wanted to play violin because that I, I was fine doing that. Uh, and I started playing violin. My mother, who is here, is a concert pianist. So classical music was a part of my household. But there weren't really you know, kids my age interested in classical music. So around 13, 14, I switched gears and I started playing in heavy metal bands, electric guitar and singing like ah, really high. Uh, and I eventually played for a band whose genre was symphonic metal. So they wanted to combine metal music with the orchestra. So I said, well, all right, well, let's learn how to write for the orchestra. So we just ordered a bunch of Tchaikovsky scores and started opening them. And we're like, all right, OK, let's do this. We purchased like a notation program and basically learned to compose just by clicking on the screen and you know, making music. Um, and then I said, I want to do this for a living. So I said, uh, well, where's the only place where I can write for orchestra? Film music. That's what I knew. So I moved to LA to study composition. And when I got to my university, I met 
a Mexican composer named Daniel Catan, who was a very famous opera composer. And he was the first living composer that I met, and I was like, you can do that? Like, you're, you're alive? Like, <laughs> you're writing classical music? This is okay? And I was like, this is it. I need to, do, I need to write classical music, and basically that's been my, my path. I, I, I um, came to the U.S. 15 years ago and to do, like, all of my professional studies, and then... Yeah, I was very lucky to, you know, have my music played by orchestras because it's very difficult. I always say you're competing against living composers, but also dead composers. Like I'm always competing against Beethoven to be on a program. So it's a tough, it's a tough job out there, but super excited to be here. And yeah, that's my story. Thank you so much. What about Roy? Um, hello, I'm Rodrigo. I guess I also started out when I was like six with like piano or guitar lessons but I was a kid who couldn't stay put, so I hated it, and I wasn't good at it. Um, so I like, kept playing with friends and all that, as any other kid would do. But like, when I was like 11 or 12, uh, my older brother was like, so there's this thing called punk, and it's great, and I'm gonna learn how to play the electric guitar. So I was like, I wanna do that too, but I hate guitar. Uh, how can I do it quick? And he was like, there's this instrument called electric bass, Basically, you do the same, but just playing one note. It's like, cool. So I, I took up the electric bass, and I started playing in bands ever since I was like 11 or 12. Um, I guess transitioning the way I would have fun with friends playing football as I was a kid, I transitioned into being in bands with people. So ever since I was like 12, I've been playing in bands, and that's what got me into music. The fact, I believe that being in a band... Um, I don't know, like my mom would say, like, everybody needs to go to psychotherapy. I would say everybody needs to be in a band be because it's a great social experiment of, like, I have this really cool idea, and probably your best friend will tell you, like, nah, it's not that good. <laughs> so it's like, like you, you enter a very nice human dialogue through music playing in bands. So I kept on doing that, and in high school, I started taking, like, uh, formal music lessons at school, at high school. They would be teaching us about Bach or Mozart and how to analyze their music, doing harmonic analysis. And I was like, a bit like, wow, I, like, I can do this too. Like I can delve into music and understand how it's built. So like when I was 15, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna keep on doing this. And I took music very seriously, started taking guitar and piano lessons, and then I applied to universities in the UK. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going for it. I got accepted into all of them, but my UK visa was rejected. So I had to stay in Mexico City. Um, I mean, I had to as a plan that I hadn't devised, but that, that helped me a lot in like switching into, like I, can, I, I have the tools, nece necessary tools to like get to wherever I want to. And I mean, by, by, that, by that time I was playing a lot of music, like singing in English, being inspired by indie music from English speaking countries. And it helped me a lot to like try and find my own identity. And I guess that's what brings me here. All of, all of my music uh, lessons being taken in Mexico City by Mexican composers and me being inspired by Mexican and Latin American cultures and turning that switch into like, you know, I can do this by myself or like in a Latin context. And yeah, that's, that's brought me to like taking a lot of music lessons in theory, composition, orchestration. I won the 2017 Arturo Marquez competition after analyzing Juan Pablo's music, who won it in 2014. That's and crazy. then Nubia won it afterwards. It's like what connects us. And now I, I won the 2020 composition competition of the Dartmouth Wind Ensemble with a cumbia, you know, tropical music inspired orchestral music. So I don't know, in the end, I intend to make music that's social, fun, and I guess in Spanish, <laughs> and that's Latin and danceable. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is really is a small world, and it's so wonderful to see all these connections. Um, so we have a very exciting concert coming up in just a few minutes. And so why don't you, what would you like the audience to know about um, your piece? What, uh, what's the title? What is it uh, called? And also what some of your inspirations? And uh, how long did it take you to write? So uh, why don't we start with Nubia one more time? Okay. Um... We, will we premiere a little Mexican suite for Will Ensemble? Okay. I love... Get it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Close, okay. close. Okay. 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 Will we premiere a little Mexican uh, suite for Will Ensemble? Uh, 
I love the working with, with, with wind and percussion instruments. Uh, I, I can say that these are my fav favorite instruments. Uh, combinations and dubs uh, sounds amazing, always. I started creating the philosophical part in January of this year. Uh, it was inspired by Mexican trees. All trees are very popular in, in Mexico, and with which I, I, I share a personal experience. Um, I started planning my intentions, and, and from the beginning, uh, I, I decided that each movement uh, should, be, be, uh, should be based on a different genre. This was simple because tree has its own distinct sense, aesthetics, and, and, and a habitat. Uh, in some cases, it, it was easy uh, and, and in, in, inevitable uh, to link the, the musical genre with the, the geography. Yeah. No? Uh, I hope that this work in, in the future uh, will be interpreted with um, multimedia and animated trees. Yes, I mean, it's, it's really wonderful. It's, it's based on trees, all the wonderful trees that you see. So we were talking about, Nubia and I were talking about how it, perhaps in future performances of our piece, you can have the, the piece performing and then in the background you, ha you can have the actual tr uh, images of the trees or maybe animations or something. So it's really wonderful. Um, oh, like that. Yeah, like, something like that, right? It's already happening. It's great. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Wonderful, thank you so much. It's a wonderful piece. Uh, so, uh, Juan Pablo, Maria Chitlan. Uh, my piece is called Maria Chitlan. In Mexico, Tlan means land. So, the first thing I came up with was the title because I wanted something catchy like Disneyland. So, Maria Chitlan seemed cool. I'm, as I said, I'm from Guadalajara, which is the city where mariachi music was invented. So, I wanted to write up it actually it was written for a competition that the Jalisco Philharmonic, which is my hometown orchestra, organized a national competition for composers. So I decided I wanted to write a piece that to pay tribute to mariachi music. Uh, and the basic story is in Mexico, you can still visit, actually in places like LA as well, as well mariachi plazas, where you hear different mariachi ensembles in each corner playing a different song, so when you walk around, the plaza, you're hearing like a different genre every five feet that you walk, so it's kind of uh, chaotic, fun, and they compete because they want, you know, to get the, the tips from the past buyers. Uh, so my piece is basically that. You'll hear like all of the different types of dances and rhythms of mariachi music. All of the melodies are original, but the rhythms and the flavor is inspired by mariachi music. Uh, eventually there's a policeman that's trying to stop the party, so watch out for the policeman somewhere in the stage. Uh, and then the ensemble chants the title of the piece because they want more music, so... Yeah, that's Mari Chitlan. It ended up winning that competition and then uh, got me that Latin Grammy nomination that was mentioned, and it's been played by 20 orchestras now, including the National Symphony here in the U.S. Um, and to, tonight is the world premiere of this new version. So originally it was for orchestra, and then Sixto got in touch with me, and then Brian about this idea of like, why not make a wind ensemble version because it would translate very well. I knew nothing about wind ensembles. I had to study up a lot, euphoniums, saxophones, who, who knew? But both Sixto and, and Brian were super generous and really you know, guided me through the process. Um, even when I delivered the final version of the score, Brian was like, I think you need to add like a soprano saxophone for some of the solos. Let's mix it up. And I was like, you're the boss. So we did it. And that's what you'll hear tonight. So world premiere, Maria Chitlan. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great piece. And it's, equal, it's equally fun for the listeners, but also for the players and the conductor as well. It's very hard to conduct. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just really fun. Thank you, Juan Pablo. And last but not least, we have uh, Cumbia Moderna. Yeah, so I wrote a piece called Cumbia Moderna. It was probably about this time of year, two years ago, and it was in lock during lockdown. It was really hot in Mexico City. I was by myself in my apartment, and I remember I had two things 
like two routines during the week that would keep me sane uh, to not lose it, which was like doing a lot of meditation and yoga. And on the other side, there was this weekly uh, Instagram live going on, on on Wednesdays by this local DJ called Sonido Confirmación. We, I would log in to Instagram and he would be like, welcome, welcome. And he would be like having this really cool filter on over his face looking like a cyborg. I'm Sonido Confirmación and he would be like playing really sick cumbias. So I would open up a beer and like be dancing by myself and like having a lot of fun. So like, you know, like connecting with people through, you know, social media. And one day when I was feeling like really chill after doing some yoga session or whatever, I sat at the computer and I started jamming ideas in a software that I use that's called Ableton Live. So you, you, you loop ideas. So I came up with several, like a handful of ideas which were like very repetitive. And I started playing around with like different ways of like putting them together. And to me it was just like, because of this mindset that I was in, I was like, okay, cumbia needs to come in. Just because of that, like, nobody told me like it needed to be a cumbia, but I was like, yeah, it's time for cumbia. So it's just like, I started dropping some bass lines and some melodic uh, trumpet lines uh, inspired in the music that I was listening in Sonido Confirmación's show. And in like two days, I came up with a whole orchestral idea in the computer with, with like MIDI instruments. And I, was, I, I had a lot of fun with like DJing for myself, like I'm gonna take up the bass. And now it's coming back, I'm like, oh yeah. I'd be like in my room by myself having a lot of fun. Um, and that took me like two to three days and then taking it to notation took me like three months because it was like, okay, you had a lot of fun, but what does this mean, you know, for like actual people, human beings to play them? So I had to like take every single idea, orchestrate it, put it in the correct register, like put articulation and dynamics. Anyway, I, so I sent it to Brian because, well, I, I saw that there was a composition competition posted on social media. My orchestration teacher, Enrico Chapella, who was mentioned earlier, posted it. So I was like, I applied, I sent it to Brian, told him, um, hello, I'm Rodrigo, this is my cumbia. I had a lot of fun making it, I hope you enjoy it. And when it won, which I'm really happy about, he told me that him and the ensemble were like actually touched by the idea that I said I had fun making it because they could tell because it's also a fun piece that they told they told me like it was nice also being in lockdown listening to this music and like feeling like I need to dance so in the end it's all as I was saying earlier like I have this really nice um, well like I want people to to be able to connect as I was connecting with Sonido Confirmación through Instagram you know with music and just have fun together thank you and we're actually also premiering an arrangement, new arrangement that Rodrigo made of a piece by the Mexican composer, uh, 19th century composer, Juventino Rosas, who uh, represents the romantic period in Mexican music. And um, it's wonderful because uh, I, every time I go to Mexico and I hear it, bands do play it a lot, but they don't have the sheet music. It's like I ask for it and they're like, I don't know, it's over here, it's in this archive here, and then you go down and you go, and it's incomplete. So I was like, we really need to have a new arrangement of this so that we get the music out. And, 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 and one of the bonuses is that it actually also makes a great piece for young bands to play as well. So we're going to see a lot of, it's what you call a grade three le difficulty level piece. So you're going to see, a, you can see a lot for middle school and high school bands that can actually play this piece as well. So it's a wonderful arrangement. We're really looking forward to this as well. Um, so this has been a really uh, quick talk because we got to head over to the concert. Um, but it's been such an honor and a pleasure to be here. And thank you all so much for your support and, and for being here. And uh, let's give them uh, one round of applause one more time. Thank you so much. Enjoy the concert. Thank you.